Hey everyone, Lowkey Lancer here with a new video about the music theory behind your favorite video game music. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see new videos as soon as they're available. And if you find something interesting about the piece that we're looking at today, don't forget to leave a comment and let me know. Now let's take a look at this music. Darkest Dungeon, a game made by Red Hook Studios, is described on their website as a challenging gothic RPG about the stresses of dungeon crawling. You will lead a band of heroes on a perilous side-scrolling descent, dealing with a prodigious number of threats to their bodily health, and worse, a relentless assault on their mental fortitude. And boy does that description fit. If you've spent even a few minutes playing through the intro level, there's a good chance that you know just how unforgiving and cruel this game can be. While the gameplay alone does enough to induce boatloads of stress onto the player, the music, created by Stuart Chatwood, does an excellent job of doubling down on everything that makes your skin crawl. Today we're going to take a look at the camping music that you have a choice to hear when you take on medium length or longer dungeons, titled A Brief Respite. This momentum. Push on to the task's end. A respite is defined as a short period of rest or relief from something difficult or unpleasant. In a game like Darkest Dungeon, where any attack could spell disaster for your group of adventurers, a respite seems like the right word for taking a break to camp during an adventure into a dungeon. In the game, camping is used for several purposes. First, it potentially gives an immediate heal and stress relief to your party if you supply them with enough food. Second, you can use camping skills to further heal and reduce stress. And third, if you have time left for it, you can buff your party in various ways. However, things can also go wrong, and what is meant to be a period of recovery in longer dungeon expeditions can lead to more disastrous occurrences. If you didn't bring enough food, your party can take additional damage and stress. If you have already taken on too much stress and receive an affliction, your characters can refuse food, healing, buffs, and cause more stress on the entire party. Camping is far from a guaranteed time for recovery. One last element to mention is that there is a 33% chance for your party to be ambushed and thrown into a fairly difficult fight that can undo all of the work you just put in, and you cannot even run away from it. So to me, it sounds like it's almost a coin toss as to whether or not your party actually gets a break from the Perilous Dungeon. And the music reflects that. By using a concept called tension and release, a brief respite becomes almost everything but. Tension and release in music can occur through any element, dynamics, rhythm, harmony, melody, instrumentation, or even the structure of a piece as a whole. A brief respite utilizes several of these elements to continue to give the player a sense of unease while attempting to recover during the difficult adventures. First, let's talk about rhythms. A brief respite is full of rhythms that throw you off the beat. From the very beginning, there is a short, long emphasis that is pervasive throughout the first half of the piece. The solo instruments in the first half, that I have marked in my transcription as an English horn and bassoon, trade lines that largely begin on off beats and continues into the solo violin in the second half. The bass drum also provides a fairly awkward five bar pattern of long short that helps throw the listener's sense of phrasing for a loop. We'll talk a little more about the bass drum as an instrument a little bit later, but I do want to note that this five bar rhythm is pervasive throughout the piece and really helps keep the listener from feeling rested. Once the second part of the music begins in measure 21, the instrument that accompanies the solo violin, which I have marked in my transcription as a celesta, begins a constant eighth note active accompaniment that serves to build tension by feeling like the music is accelerating towards a resolution. But a resolution never comes. Next, we're going to talk about the harmony and some intervals that show up that specifically add to the tension and release of the music. The harmony is where much smaller moments of actual respite come and go. The chorus and strings provide slow-moving, constant sound that does occasionally sound pleasant and calming. However, it does move in and out of dissonance that creates smaller moments of tension and release. 
The biggest harmonic tension in this piece is the inclusion of the major second and minor second intervals that very regularly add a clash to the overall harmony that sometimes resolves to a more consonant interval, but also sometimes doesn't. Each section of the music ends with the major second becoming a minor second, which adds increased tension towards the end of the section that just barely resolves mostly by dropping most of the other notes instead of resolving to a consonant chord. By leaving out a solid harmonic resolution, along with the rhythmic elements, the music does a great job of preventing you from gaining a footing, and this respite becomes just barely less stressful than traversing the dungeon itself. Now let's talk about the structure. A brief respite is divided into two sections, each about 20 measures long. The first section is marked by a melody that trades off between two woodwinds, marked in my score from the English horn and bassoon, doing a call and response for the first about eight measures, before a single woodwind, what I have marked as the bassoon, takes over the melody until the end. The second section consists of a solo violin melody with an active accompaniment by a keyboard, what I have marked in my transcription as a celesta. I think it's important to note that there's a chance you won't hear this entire piece during your playthrough, depending on how fast you move through the camping sequence. For example, the speedrun only makes it through a few measures, so it really needs to do a good job setting up the scene quickly and has to be able to move away from the scene smoothly as well, whether you continue your movement through the dungeon or get ambushed so as to not be too jarring from one area to another. Overall, I think this piece does this well through a combination of instrumentation and an early inclusion of dissonant intervals that at least give you the tension and relief in the first few measures, even if you don't make it all the way through the piece. The second section, being similar melodically to the first, does a really good job of keeping a familiar sound throughout, but adding the active accompaniment really gives the second section much more tension as it almost feels like it's accelerating to the end. So whether you only hear a few measures of this piece, or you sit and listen to it a few times through during your camping session, a brief respite is set up really well to keep you from feeling too comfortable, even if you're not fighting at the moment. Speaking of instrumentation, one final way that we'll talk about this piece emphasizing tension and release is the choice of instrumentation. The main thing that I want to talk about here is the presence of the bass drum. The bass drum being present throughout provides a constant source of tension in this otherwise fairly calm piece. The battle music, for both regular combat and bosses, is very heavy on the percussion, and drums historically have been used in the military to distract, confuse, and demoralize enemies on the battlefield. This provides a feeling that a fight can be right around the corner, remember the 33% ambush chance, or even just that your party is not really safe even around a campfire in a room that you already cleared. While the bass drum provides a sense of tension just by being present, in contrast, the strings and chorus typically do a good job of providing a sense of calm, not always, depending on the harmonies, by being relatively slow-moving, heavy sources of sound. This almost provides a church-like feeling or sustained organ pedals just washing sound over the player. This feeling of calm, however, comes and goes through the inclusion of dissonant intervals as discussed before. So on one hand, you have the drums of war being persistently struck in the background, but on the other, you have an almost organ-like string and choral harmonies that continually provide a bit of tension and release through just the instrumentation. The interesting part is that neither of them is ever without the other, so you're just constantly in conflict with yourself as to whether or not it's actually okay to relax. To wrap everything up, the music of Darkest Dungeon is very often loud, dissonant, in-your-face, and stress-inducing. Stuart Chatwood did a phenomenal job creating something that never lets up, 
giving you little chance to feel a sense of calm during the high-risk, high-reward gameplay. One place where you might expect some calm, though, is while camping. Its main purpose is to heal and relieve your party stress during long dungeons, right? However, even in a previously cleared room around a bright fire, Darkest Dungeon punishes those who get too complacent. And this is true even in the seemingly harmless camp music. Is it truly a respite? Or does danger lurk around even the brightest lit corners? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see new videos as soon as they're uploaded. And don't forget to follow on Twitch and Twitter at LowKeyLancer. Until next time, enjoy your games and the music that goes with them.